Hello everyone, Gerard Scarpese here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. Today we're working with Teresa Adams on HB Live number 302. That's right, we've done this over 300 times, bringing you incredible education over and over every week. Today we're in New York City, and as I mentioned, we're working with Teresa Adams. Teresa is a global artist with L'Oreal Professional, and you know L'Oreal is synonymous with beautiful color. Uh, and what Teresa is going to be sharing with you is a balayage technique and really focusing on how to do this freehand painting but keep the lift cool. Is that what we're talking about? Keeping it cool with balayage, Teresa? Totally. And how we really get, you know, rid of this residual warmth so we can have like a beautiful, like wintry, icy blonde. Marissa has had foil. Marissa has had balayage. I painted her last time and already started to convert her more into that softer grow out, but her hair likes to oxidize with a little bit of warmth. So now we need to go through and just cleanse those ends out so we get some nice pop in the hair. When I am painting, I'm always looking at how I can be the most fast, efficient, and effective. Watch as I'm like smoothing my product out on my palette because I want to make sure I have a nice shine to my lightener. I'm using platinum with 30 volume and a little tiny splash of 40 Maji Creme in there just to get a beautiful consistency. I want it to have a yogurty consistency so that way I get a great glide on the hair. So you said you were using, tell me the name of the product again. Is the Plutinium. This, this one here? Yep. That's cool packaging. It is. Is that glass or plastic? That is plastic which is good because sometimes I have a tendency to drop things, so and now, you know, keep it why safe. this? I can imagine that L'Oreal has a lot of lifting products. Why did you choose this particular one? So the reason I chose the Platinium is it protects the hair as it's lifting, right? It's a paste lightener, so it's gonna help protect those natural lipids in the hair because even though we want her to be nice and pop in with her blonde, it's more important that her canvas feels great and that her hair feels healthy and lovely behind the chair. So that way when she's coming in the next time, I know that I have a great canvas to work with. All right, so it leads me to my first question here. I know sure. that we call this keeping it cool. Yes. Now, I, I think, you know, having been a hairdresser for a long time, but I've never been a colorist, there's always like a fear, I've heard it many times from hairdressers, about not using foil and just like going in and painting the hair that they're afraid they're not going to be able to control the lift. So what, what are some tips there, you know, for those who are still maybe afraid to try painting? So, balayage. so for me, when I'm painting the hair, I'm doing balayage. It's really about the application, right? How it looks is how it's going to lift. So I already have a little bit, well, actually a good amount of lightning through the end. So I'm not being too heavy in my application because I don't need it to go so far. But I want to make sure it looks nice and even because how it looks is how it's going to lift. Now, if you notice through the ends, I'm not putting quite as much product on the ends and that's because they already have more lightness to them so they don't need as much product in order for me to build up that lightness my conversation always with my clients especially when we're going for something icy or i want that like khaleesi type of blonde is that it's going to take more than one application when i'm painting right but that we're really going with the season because in the fall i wanted her to have a little bit more tone against her skin now that we're going into winter time because maybe it's cold outside at least it is here in new york you know, we want to make sure that over time I'm getting her to that lightness that I want. I could do that with foil, but then I'm not going to get the same ease in my grow out for my application. So I'd rather take my time and get there over a couple of applications or a couple of appointments for my client. And then her hair is going to feel great and look great and be ready for like the different seasonal changes that happen with the skin tone. So if you're just joining us, this is HB Live number 302. We're super excited to bring you Teresa Adams. She is a L'Oreal professional international artist. She works here in New York City at Dop Dop, one of our favorite salons in Soho. Great team down there. Love, uh, love everyone that works there. We've had you know, lots of great uh, events. And, and uh, Joe, the owner there, is an incredible voice for the industry. She sure is. Uh, how long have you guys been working together? For about 16 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's I know, awesome. and I'm only 25. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, guys, if you have any questions, that's what we're here for. We love technical questions about the product, about balayage, about the business. We've got Teresa here. She's going to be doing this full application, so you're going to get to see it from start to finish. 
We also have a pre-done model that we're going to bring on in a few minutes because what Teresa wanted to show is variations of, of doing balayage and using the, the product on different levels of hair. Can you talk a little bit about Marissa's hair? Say hi, Marissa. Hey. hey. Marissa, she's obviously got, you know, what's her base? What was the existing condition? How does that affect sure. your choice of product and application? So Marissa is a natural level seven, so more kind of a deeper blonde family naturally. Um, she had some pre-existing highlights going on from both painting and from foil um, applications before. So I'm making sure that I'm using something that's protective on her hair. Also in my parting, to me it's, you know, be smart in your placement. With painting, everybody wants to, you know, go through and really uh, put a million pieces in the hair. And it's less is more, right? If everything is light, then nothing is light. We'll help here with your plastic. I do, I got it. So, now. what is the purpose of the plastic? We're over here. Cal, maybe you can get a shot. We're pulling some plastic. So, the purpose of it is to encase, you know, my product because if it dries out, then it stops lifting. Mm -hmm. Right? So, with If it's the, wet, it's working. If it's wet, it's working. Yeah, that's yeah, our friend Lupe. Lupe. <laughs> well, so I, I pick up these little tips along I the way. I love here. it. If it's wet, it's working. Totally. And for some lighteners, like we have the free hand, that creates a shell around the hair, so I don't necessarily need to use a perforated plastic with that. But with the platinum, I want to make sure I'm getting that, that lift and that you really want to see the lightener on the hair. I don't want to be able to see the hair through my application. All right, so that leads me to a question. Our, our guest last night was uh, Kia Neal, and she did awesome. an HB Live last night, and she's already tuning in with questions. She's asking, is this a clay lightener? It sounds like it's not. It is not. It's a paste lightener. And if not, what are your opinions on clay lighteners? Um, I think they can be fantastic when I'm working with hair that I want a more natural, uh, very soft finish on. Um, because they're only going to lift maybe up to five levels depending on texture. Now with Marissa, because she has a lot of hair, but it's fine textured, but she also has a good amount of eumelanin pigment. So that means she likes to stay in the warm, right? So that's another reason why I like eumelanin. to... Eumelanin. Eumelanin versus fair melanin. That's the pigment that makes her hair lift warm? Yes. Interesting. Right? So when I'm looking at the hair, different hair lifts differently. Right, if you have more fair melanin type of underlying pigments, then you have a tendency to lift a little bit cleaner. How can you tell by just looking at the hair? I can tell by like the reflection of the tone. So we can see where her natural color is right here. And you can see that it has a little bit of a goldeny, somewhat coppery reflection to it. Also, when I'm looking at a client's skin tone, that's usually gonna tell me a lot about how their hair is going to lift. Marissa's skin tone has a nice peachiness to it. And even though it's like peachy and creamy and lovely, that usually means for me, for my client, that they're probably gonna wanna stay in the warm when they're lifting. So I need to make sure that I'm getting a really thorough application with my painting. So that way we stay in those like cooler, more icy tones and really icy meaning like that we're just controlling that warmth so we get a little bit more pop and brightness. All right, Teresa, you got a lot of love coming in. I wanna give some shout outs. Of course, Nanette Negret, it's nice to see you watching Nanette. Nanette says 302, I think it's more than that. And you know what, Nanette, you're right. Somewhere along the way we lost count, so we're probably more at like 325, 330, give or take. Uh, Jean Harris is watching, and Mila Ansari, Amber Thorne says such a pretty application, she would know. Um, and Amber did have a great question. Um, about the palette. Do you always use the palette? And can we, can we get a close-up of the palette, Kelly? Yep. I don't always use the palette. I'm just using it to be able to smooth my product out right now. Sometimes I paint off my hand and actually as I work my way up the hair and I get more into those really detailed places for those like pop pieces through the top surface, I'm going to switch to my hand and put my palette down. But right now from my palette, you can see it has a tiny bit of perforation, so it helps me just smooth my product so that way when I'm placing it on the hair, you know, no lumps, no bumps, no coconuts, like we don't need any of that because that's gonna create uneven lifting and we want this to be clean because the cleaner we work, the cleaner our work is. Uh, Carolyn Chamberlain is wondering about, you know, doing what you're doing versus like a back combing technique in mm -hmm. applying the color. 
Is, do you get a different result, or can you speak to that? Is that something you ever do? Um, sometimes I do a back combing, but that's usually when I want a little bit more um, space or more of a, a, a combination of a baby light type of painting in the hair. When I want to make sure that I'm getting these really beautiful ribbons of, of blonde in the hair, that's usually when I go more so into uh, my more traditional painting. Awesome. Now, you, you mentioned the term baby lights. For you know, anyone who's maybe watching and doesn't know exactly what that is, can you, can you describe the difference? So baby light for me is really fine, super duper natural highlights. So usually we're taking, you know, textured stitches of a very fine slice in the hair. So it's going to give you very, very, very natural, just like peekaboo of lightness in the hair. Right when I want to make sure that I'm creating these ribbons because balayage is a you know open air, so that's why we're using the plastic, not containing in with a, a foil because a foil is a heat conduit which is going to balance the heat from the scalp through the mid lengths and ends. When I'm painting this way, I want to make sure that I have a visual balance to the density and the texture of the hair. So we've had quite a few questions, Teresa, about what product you're using, sure. what volume the developer is, and how you choose the volume. I think sometimes that's a big question when people are kind of painting and doing balayage. Because mm -hmm. I've heard people say, oh, you need to use really high volume because it's an open air um, application. But first, what, what product are you using? Just recapping for everyone that's just joining us. So what I'm using is Platinum Plus. I love the way it says fast action, fast action, fast, fast action. Fast action, <laughs> right? And it is our paste lightener. And why I choose to use this is that it's helping protect the hair as it's lifting. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping my canvas nice and healthy, that I'm protecting those natural lipids in the hair as I'm lifting. I'm using that with the 30 volume because as you can see, we already have a, a fair amount of hair that's been pre-lightened from previous. She's got a little hair scurry going on, right? So that way I don't necessarily need to go immediately to a 40, but when I'm choosing developers, it's all about timing and what pre is pre-existing in the hair. If I have somebody who has no color in their hair and I'm dealing with a virgin application, then what's going to happen with that is I might go into more of a 40 volume. And uh, cream versus liquid, does that make a difference? So I'll do a combination when I'm working with Platinium most of the time, which is our Nutra developer, which is a conditioning developer. And then I'll loosen it slightly with the Maggi Creme. And that's just so I have a great consistency of product to paint with. I don't want to be fighting my product, right? If it's too tight and I'm dragging it down the hair, I need to loosen it. If it's too loose, then it can seep on the hair. And the key with this is that I want to make sure that I have no product underneath in my sections, that it's surface and only becomes saturated towards like the very like last third of the hair. So lots of good questions coming in now. Denise Tillier is wondering if you ever paint using two colors or do you always just use lightener? Um, I sometimes paint with multiple colors. Usually if I want to add depth in the hair, then I'll use it as a secondary color in the hair. Um, if I'm lightening the hair, I'll usually generally just use a lightener. And then what will happen is based on my application of my product will affect the amount of lift that I want. So I'll do like I'm doing right here, a little bit more textured application. So it's not as heavy versus this front bit right here, which is going to give me a little bit more of a pop, but I want to make sure that I'm leaving dimension and depth in the hair. So that way I'm creating more of that positive and negative so that the blonde really pops against her natural tone. And then I'm using her last application as a secondary color to create more movement. Use what you got in the hair, you know, keep it simple. Michael Balzano is wondering about the sections you're taking, if you could really kind of explain the theory, the concept behind the sectioning. Sure can. So my first section was about an inch and a half straight back. I'm parting the hair from the heavy side, so she has an asymmetric parting. And I did a radial, so straight down to the nape of her neck sectioning, dividing the hair in half. Now I'm working up in a soft horizontal, working into uh, a soft horizontal, slightly rounded to the shape of the head. So that way I'm getting great movement in there, but that each section serves a purpose, right? When I'm painting, if it's a client who's like, you know, don't forget that highlight right above my ear, that might not be a painting client. 
You know, that might be somebody who I need to utilize foils more so for because they prefer a more monochromatic effect in the hair. Right now, I'm working right on the top of the head. So by taking this type of sectioning, what it's allowing me to do is hit more areas on the planes of the head. So that way I can work a little bit faster on my clients. Generally, my appointments in the salon for painting are 30 to 40 minutes at most because New York is expensive. <laughs> Teresa Valdez, you know, you had mentioned the side. First off, lots of people are asking again that uh, everyone wants to know what you're using. This the, is the platinum. platinum Studio Blonde from L'Oreal. Yep. You guys can see that. And you chose this for what specific purpose? To help create amazing lift in the hair. Because it's a paste, it also does a more gradual lifting. So it's a little bit creamier in its lift. So if I wasn't looking for a more icy tone like I'm going to do today, then it would be also amazing if I wanted to leave it a little bit more sunny looking and that it looks natural without looking raw in the hair. All right, so back to sectioning questions. Sure. Teresa Valdez is wondering, you mentioned you're working on a side parting. Can you, what's the difference if it was a center parting or a side parting? How would that change your sectioning? If I'm working with the center parting, then I would still divide the head in half, work up one side and then the other side. Usually what I like to do, especially if I'm working in a center parting, is that I always mix fresh for each side so I get a more even lift when the hair is processing. All right, so we always have people watching from all over the world, but this is a first, I think. Uh, I've never seen anyone watching from Myanmar before. Awesome. So, yeah, that, you know, we've, we've seen South Africa, we've seen Pakistan, we've seen Australia. Let us know where you guys are watching from. We're always wondering, you know, we're trying to reach the whole world here, and uh, we, we'd love to give you a shout-out. Let us know what country you're in, where you're watching from. And, of course, if you have any questions for Teresa, she's doing such a fantastic job of explaining and educating so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, in your role, what, what type of education are you doing for L'Oreal? So for L'Oreal, I um, you know, get to travel around all over the place and all over the world in order to teach. But I also get to teach here in the U.S. at our academies, which we have one here in New York. And then we have our other academy on the West Coast down in uh, Southern California and Newport Beach. What I'm teaching generally is balayage, but we actually just started these amazing classes which are more trend-based and are going to be changing per season. So they are our color addict and paint addict classes. And I believe that the schedule for those for 2019 is just about to come up. So if you go to prous.lorealprofessional.com, which will you know, have a little URL on the bottom, I'm sure, in order to send you to the right place. Sign up for the uh, mailing list so that you can be the first to get into those classes because they sell out really quickly and they really help push you out of your box and how you're painting behind the chair because, you know, we can all get set up in our little ruts of what we do behind the chair and it's good to kind of get out of that and get to play and get to explore your creativity and your, your passion and your inspiration. You know, I love doing hair. Um, behind the chair, I also cut hair. So for me, placement is everything and how I can have each client feel, you know, couture and customized in their experience. So it's really about bringing out each individual style. Question coming in from Heather Wakefield. Um, do you feel like this is going to come out icy on its own without toning? I think we'll still need to polish the hair a little bit. Um, it'll need a gloss. Yeah. Because of the... Is that the language you prefer? Do you not use the term toning? I know some people have moved away from that word. What's your theory? So I usually say gloss with clients. Are we toning when we're glossing? Sure. But I think sometimes our clients, when they hear toner... They think it's like a correction, They right? think it's a yeah. correction, and they think that you did something wrong. You know, so when I say a gloss, it's also not just about, you know, adding tone to the hair. But I use Deolite and Deolichess, which are both non-ammoniated, you know, demi-permanent. Deolite is an acid technology, so that means that it's not going to lift and it's only going to deposit. But it's also going to condition the hair right so it's going to search out all those little like you know part of my you know nerdiness right now right <laughs> that it's going to search for all those negative ions in the hair and really like smooth out where from you know styling from coloring from any of those types of things going on that we all do on a daily basis 
that it's going to make the hair feel super shiny, really polished, and just add a little bit of tone to, you know, clean it up and keep it feeling fantastic. All right, let's do a couple shout outs because we asked where everyone was from. We've got uh, Joanne Louise Simmons watching from Cardiff in Wales. Yay. That's, we've got La uh, Lauren, who I believe is our friend, Lauren uh, Escobedo watching from Texas. Awesome. Kate Pierce is in Bath, UK. Amazing. Kathleen Orr watching from Scotland, uh, Ali Moore from Texas. So Texas and Scotland are popular today. I've seen a lot of people watching totally, from there. Totally, giving you UK. Yeah, <laughs> we've got uh, Mariana Demacheva watching from Bulgaria. Awesome. Everyone's tuning in. Thanks, guys. Let us know where you're watching from. We always want to see, you know, how exotic and how far away everyone is. And again, if you have any questions for Teresa, she's doing such a great job educating and sharing this information. Um, and that's so important. So there were a few questions about how long it takes you behind the chair mm -hmm. to do this application. It feels like you're working in real time. And there were a few questions about like um, pricing. Can you, if you can you allude to those things for us. Sure. So for me, for uh, application time behind the chair, uh, painting takes anywhere for me from 15 to 45 minutes. So depending on whether I'm doing, you know, a few accent pieces or I'm going into more of a full head application like we're doing today. Um, and that's when placement becomes so important to me because it's really, you know, about working fast, efficient and effective behind the chair. Right, my only appointments that are longer than 45 minutes behind the chair are uh, color corrections, and those are only done with consultation. So, because how many times have we had behind the chair somebody book an appointment for a single process, but they're really a color correction? I know you can feel me on that one out there. We've all had that happen. For me, with pricing with painting, um, it's really dependent on where you're starting from in your you know, price point, but I feel like, you know, when you're putting yourself out there as a hairstylist and developing over the years and you're passionate about education, you know, it's it's time to raise those prices. For me, with the, the business side of balayage, looking at what people are charging for their highlight and usually doing a 20 to 30% upcharge on that because it is so customized, because it really requires you to take that time to work through the hair, to stay focused on each section and each piece that you're doing, and that your clients feel the artistry and how bespoke that that is and that they also get a much easier grow out from that, right? So I'm not needing to see them quite as often as I do my clients who are, you know, maybe more a heavy foil who want to come in every, you know, eight weeks, some of them six. So you have to be like, no. <laughs> Kate Pierce has a great, uh, very pertinent question. Uh, how do you handle or prevent bleeding? She says she's still having problems with bleeding when she's doing her balayage. So if you see how much hair I have underneath, right, that's part of my cushion. The other thing is when I'm holding the hair is my tension, right? So my thumb is going to always point towards where I, my parting is on the hair. And then I'm keeping a nice elevation, especially because I'm working above the parietal ridge right now. So while I'm working in kind of this first zone of the hair, um, right off of the scalp, just at the beginning of those mids, I want to make sure that I'm holding the hair up and that I'm with my brush, just using the corner of the brush, just like I would holding a pen. So I'm not pushing any of that product underneath. If my brush is more straight down, then that's going to create a pressure that pushes through. The other thing that you can do is you can utilize cotton underneath. Create a little bit of a pillow of cotton, place that underneath at the regrowth or through the mids and ends so you make sure you're not getting any residual product. Um, also, if you're using uh, too much heat on the hair, heat is always going to create swell of your product. Um, the great thing about platinum is sometimes if I need a little bit of heat just to push through, uh, then this does not swell. Where you put it is where it goes. But I still want to make sure in my application that I have no product underneath and I'm just keeping my brush nice and flat to the hair. See those long movements to help smooth out the product. So again, for everyone that's asking about the product, Teresa today is using the L'Oreal Platinum, which is a, a paste lightener. 
Mm -hmm. And how does that differ from other lighteners? So with the paste lightener, because you're getting some of that protection in the hair, it's going to create a more gradual lift in the hair versus when I'm using more powder-based lighteners. What that's going to do is do most of its lifting in the first 10 to 15 minutes and it makes the hair lift a little bit more in a raw state. So when you're working in a, you're lifting in a raw state, then I, of course, am going to know that I'm going to need to gloss the hair. This is going to lift the hair with a little bit more creaminess, but because I want that really like wintry, beautiful blonde happening, we're still going to gloss her hair afterwards. So within this studio blonde line, the blonde studio line, th yeah. there's quite a few different there sure mixtures. Is. So there's a powder, there's a clay, there's so there is a. It's actually quite. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like a loose powder. Nope. Yep. So for Blonde Studio, we have Maji Mesh, which is an ammonia-free lightener, but that lifts with warmth in the hair. And especially because I'm going for, you know, an icier result, that's not why, that's the reason I didn't choose that for this application, but I love that product. It's already the perfect consistency to paint with. It's a three-part lightener that uh, lifts without heat for 30 minutes and with heat for 15. So I think this is a perfect time as you're moving to the opposite side to bring on your pre-done model. Totally. Um, if you're just joining us, we're here in New York City. I'm Gerard Scarpacy, the co-founder of the Hairbrain community. Proud to bring you this incredible education with our friends from L'Oreal Professional. Today we're featuring Teresa Adams. She's a L'Oreal Professional global artist and educator. She wanted to show the versatility of the product and the technique on yeah. different hair textures. So here she obviously worked on a much darker base and a totally different type of hair texture, but used a very similar application. Teresa, I, can you speak about this a little sure bit? Sure can. I use the same exact partings that I'm using on Marissa. So working off the heavy side of the hair, I actually lucked out because we had no color history. This was the first time you were ever getting your hair colored, right? Correct. Correct. So what I chose to use, because she has such a naturally dark base, uh, a level four base, I use the Multi Techniques, which is a powder lightener, and I use that with 40 volume. So that's this one here? That is. And that so this was a powder yes. versus what you're using here, which is a paste. Exactly. I'm learning. I'm finally exactly. learning. After 30 we're years, get yeah, I'm going to be covered. I'm going to make money. <laughs> So the reason I chose the multi techniques is because I was dealing with such a beautiful, rich, dark base, and I wanted to make sure that I got the lift that I needed, plus also for timing. So I knew for that that I wanted to get her hair lifted quickly so I could make sure you guys could see her hair really amazingly, and also for our clients. I lifted her to uh, seven going into an eight. I purposely left her application off scalp going more into the mids and ends of her hair so that way she this is her very first time with hair color. I don't want her to have a really hard grow out from that. Um, and we glossed it with Dear Richesse, which is Demi Permanent, 7N, two parts of that, and one part of 0.11, which is pure tone and that is blue blue. Awesome, and we'll bring her back on again later if anyone has any questions and we'll review that. So now, uh, could you just refresh, there's lots of people just tuning in. You're well, moving welcome to the second everybody. Side. Yeah. You're moving to the second side. Tell us about your partings, the product that you're using, and don't spare us any details. We're For real junkies. Sure. I'm using platinum, and I'm doing that with 30 volume, and there's a tiny splash of 40 in there just to loosen it up. I always like to keep on my tray. Um, this is Maji Creme, and it's blue, so I know what color it is. It matches, you know, our Maji Creme bottle. Um, and that way I can just loosen my product as I'm working, because as it's releasing oxygen, our products thicken up. And we want to make sure that we get that beautiful glide on the hair. If you see while I'm painting, there's no product underneath. It's only on the surface to begin with. And then as I get to these ends right here, kind of the last bits and parts of the you know lower third of the hair depending on length I'm then going to create saturation if I want to check and make sure everything looks good underneath I can just lift up but I never want to fold my my palette when I'm working with a palette on the hair because I don't want to create any hard lines of demarcation so the way that it works is you put the product on the palette mm -hmm, and, and I you, smooth it out mm -hmm. And then you lay, so does some of that get on the bottom of the section? Is that? Well, I utilize only putting the hair on the palette when I want to create a saturation in the hair. So you, yeah, you don't just lay it on the palette and just totally paint away, okay. No. 
So it's more uh, like where you're depositing your product so that you can then put it onto the hair. It's more like a painter's easel until I'm getting to the end. So what I want you to see is holding the hair back to get into that hairline. Nice and smooth, long movements. Now I am shifting the hair into natural fall so it's not resting on the hair behind it. I'm going to re-strengthen that because I want it to have a good pop. We want our supermodel pop around the front of the face. Now I'm lying it on my planchette because this is where I'm going to bring in that saturation. And I'm really tapering in those ends together to create an insulation so I get a faster lift. So Kate Pierce again has another great question. She's a little bit confused by toners. Um, and first off, are you planning to tone here? And then her question really is, what confuses her is, do you tone to the level that you lift to? So if you lift to a seven, do you use a seven to tone it? Um, and I, I get, maybe that varies from you know product to product, but what's your thought theory? I think it varies from product to broad product, and I think that it's more so about what's the opacity of the color line that you're working with, right? So if I'm working with Dia Light and I'm glossing, for me, for L'Oreal, that's almost more like a, a watercolor type of feel to it. So I don't mind if, if I need to do a lot of control of warmth, then I will probably uh, tone on level. Right, but if I'm using something like Rochesse that has a little bit more pigment to it, then I'm going to go up a level, especially if I'm working with cool tones. Because to the eye, cool tones read a half a level to a level deeper on the hair. So I wanna make sure especially that I'm keeping that brightness. Another trick for you all, when I'm glossing the hair and I'm working on a blonde like Marissa, I wanna make sure, you know, what is the hair in the front, right? It's finer, which means it's gonna be more porous. So when I gloss the hair, I isolate that away, gloss the back, and then pull the front in just for the last couple minutes so I haven't done you know, all this work to make the front brighter and gloss my work away. So you know, as a colorist, you really have to know within the product line you're working with the subtle differences. And um, what do you suggest for someone you know, who's working with L'Oreal who really wants to learn about the subtle differences from product to product? Are there specific classes they can take? Totally. I mean, here in the States, you can take our color certification, which you can look up and find out about on prous.l'orealprofessionnel.com. Our color certification is amazing. It walks you through all of our products, uh, color, lighteners, and you work into the last class being working on live models correctly models right so any questions and if you're looking to you know really push yourself out also there's all sorts of digital content that's coming out from L'Oreal Professional that I think you're going to be really excited about for 2019 because it's you know this is all information that we have to share with one another well, it's it's such an important tool when you're a colorist a hundred because the color is you know more than half the battle and then the technique is the rest so you really have to understand what you're using and I think and why not, you're using yeah, it out of 10 times when a colorist has some challenge it's maybe they didn't understand some subtlety about the product they were using totally and that you have to you know look at what is the feel of the product right what is the texture that that color is going to give you is it more sheer is it more opaque do i want more high shine uh, i generally relate our color lines to paint and different textures of paint because everything is paint but different paints have different feels and different weight to them i love this question coming in from uh joanne simmons uh because it's something when i owned a salon i was always con constantly asking my colorist about sure um if you're doing a gray touch up and some highlighting or balayage do you do the root touch up first and then separately do this or do you do it all together at the same time this is a big one i do both Thank you. Right. So for me, if I have a client who has really resistant gray coverage and I need to do a highlight application that is all the way to the scalp, I'm going to do those as two separate applications. First, the regrowth, because that is that client's primary concern is to, you know, get rid of that sparkle in the hair. Shiny is good. Sparkly is bad. Um, but for a client who I'm doing more of a, you know, root shadowed or off the scalp application that I don't need to get my highlights all the way, you know, to the top, then using a sectioning like I'm using today with broader pieces, I'll do my application and my lightening at the same time. And how I'll address that is I'll apply my base, lighten my pieces, plastic, next section, and work up the head. 
If you're just joining us, uh, I want to catch you up on, on what's happening here. I'm Gerard Sparapacy, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. We're in New York City working from Blonde Studio, kind of our home base for this educational um, information that we're always sharing, our HB Live series. We're up to number 302. Uh, at any time, if you want to go back and watch other great education, you just go on our Facebook page and you click videos and you can access the whole library. It's categorized so you can go in and see color. We've done tons of great color education with L'Oreal Professional. Mm -hmm. You can go back and see all of that at any time. Today we're working with Teresa Adams and she's doing a fantastic job. What a great educator and, and just such a beautiful I'm, colorist. Your I'm technique. Fun. Uh, that's what's <laughs> most important. Are you having fun, Marissa? Yeah. All right. And, and looking what did you beautiful. say, Marissa? And looking beautiful. <laughs> if you guys have any questions at all about color or L'Oreal product, about the specific technique, totally. go ahead and just write it in here and I'll do my best to get those questions to Teresa. And then Teresa, if you could just again catch everyone up sure on can. the technique, the products you're using give us an overview. So we're using platinum, which is our paste lightener that's helping protect the hair as it's lifting. It's protecting those natural lipids in the hair. Let me it's show these guys lift this. It's in a beautiful creamy This is the bag. packaging. I am, you know, painting the hair. We have a little, you know, hair story going on that you can see there's some natural warmth that exists in the hair and from, you know, oxidized old color that, you know, we need to cleanse that out a little bit. I'm using, you know, primarily 30. I put a little splash of 40 in there probably just for good luck, just so that way, because lightener is always about timing. And because we have, you know, a little bit of a, a lightened history in the hair, it's not that I have to go so far. In my lifting so I want to make sure that I'm being really really cognizant of you know making sure that that hair is staying nice and healthy keeping nice clean application because how it looks is how it's going to lift I am a colorist too especially when I am painting I like to take a little bit of broader pieces I want you to think less is more so that way I'm creating these beautiful ribbons of color whether she's wearing it straight or whether she's gonna wear it with a wave to open up. You know, the truth is when you step back here, you can see exactly what the, what the color is going to be. Totally. Yeah, you can totally see it. So we had a question. I know you touched on this a little bit before, but it's an important totally. one. Amanda Schmidt is wondering about how you prevent bleeding without using cotton. I, I guess she normally, and you mentioned sometimes you do, but can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sometimes I use cotton. Primarily when I'm using cotton, it's I'm dealing with a heavier texture in the hair. I just want to show you guys a little trick before I talk about that. My product is thickening up because I'm in my last section. So this is 40 volume Maji Creme. So I'm just gonna take a couple of drops of it on my planchette before I load up my product. So that way it helps me smooth out my product so it's back to the right viscosity or texture that I need it to be. See how it just developed that beautiful like satiny shine? That's what I need my product to look like. And I'm placing that on my planchette to begin with, but because I'm doing the top, I'm now going to take that product, I'm going to lay it on my hand, because I want to make sure when I'm working around those hairlines on the top that I don't have anything in the way that could, you know, get in her face or anything like that. Um, when I choose to use cotton is when I'm dealing usually with heavier textures or curly hair. Um, with Marissa's hair, I felt it was fine not to because I'm utilizing good tension. Marissa, I'm going to have you tilt your head towards me. Perfect. Teresa, I'm going to bring up back your first model um, who you pre-colored. Is it Natasha? Vanessa. Vanessa, sorry. Vanessa, yeah. It says beautiful Vanessa here. And I think it's very appropriate because there's a question about toning darker hair. Totally. Um, Ali Faye Moore has a question. If you want to tone to red or caramel on darker hair, do you use only the demi-permanent colors? or? You know, and I, I figured that this was a good example to talk about working on darker hair. So when I'm working with darker hair, I primarily most of the time utilize Richesse because it has a little bit more opacity to it and it's still a demi-permanent. Could I use permanent color? Sure, but I didn't want to affect her natural base at so all. So this is the Richesse? That is the Richesse. And that's a demi-permanent? That is a demi-permanent. Okay. So what I used on uh, Vanessa is 7N, two parts of 7N, so our natural, with one part of our 0.11. So that is pure tone blue blue, which is our silver, just to add a little bit of tone to it. When I'm working on deeper bases, and I want to neutralize out, you know, warmth, depending on how much I want to neutralize out. I still wanted a little reflection so she gets a little pop through those ends in it, but I didn't want it to feel, you know, too raw. 
Um, so I always like to make sure I put natural in that, right? Because blue tones and cool tones on brunettes is always going to be the first thing that fades out when they're washing their hair. And especially for Vanessa, this was the first time she had ever had color in her hair. So we don't anticipate her being a very high maintenance client, meaning that I'm probably not going to see her again for, you know, a good four or five months before she needs to redo an application or we add a few accent pieces in around the front of the face. So I wanna make sure that I have that natural in there so it really fills my, you know, to create that tone and then I can add my blue on top of that. If I just did a blue or a green on its own, that's gonna leave the hair really quickly and that's when they feel like they get too brassy too fast. Great question from Michael Balzano. When you get up to the parting, mm -hmm. do you match the points on each side of the head or do you offset? Great question. I don't match the points. I want them just a tiny bit off from one another. So like your eyebrows, sisters, not twins. <laughs> Mine aren't even cousins. <laughs> Mine could be Siamese <laughs> if I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Everyone is loving what you're doing. Lots of uh, lots of love, lots of hearts. Oh, Thank thanks, you guys, guys for all I the love support. It. If you have questions, I mean, Teresa is such a great educator, and we're so lucky to have her here. Thank you to L'Oreal Professional for you know kind of supporting this ongoing education. Um, it's something that we do with them several times throughout the year. Let us know any other great L'Oreal artists that you'd like to see, and we'll do our best to to bring them in. Teresa's. Incredible. She's a colorist here in New York who works at Dop Dop, one of our favorite salons, owned by Joe Blackwell, who's a longtime friend and just uh, such a, a great person for our industry. Um, how long have you guys worked together? We've worked together for 16 years. I've been in the industry for a little over 20, and, uh, and I love it. I love doing hair. I started actually as a session stylist and thought I was just going to style and cut hair in my career. And it was through working with inspirational hair colorists like Joe Blackwell or you know Lori Zabel and uh, Chris Sorby and so many other people who I just really got to absorb and learn so much for that I got to develop my own. I Nancy Braun, yeah. you know, just phenomenal, phenomenal. Shelly Moore, I mean, I can go on and on and on. I'd love to hear from some of you who some of the educators that have inspired you in your career are. So let us know as you're shouting out from around the world. Yeah. I, you know, I know that hair painting balayage is all the rage now, but there was a point where, you know, I think L'Oreal was one of the only companies, being a French company in totally. the history of French coloring, because it's known as kind of a French technique. Balayage, for those of you that maybe don't know, means to sweep. It does. And it's the actual move. Elbows. Boom. <laughs> Je m'appelle Gerard. <laughs> Je m'appelle Therese. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, for, when you when you mentioned Joe, I you know I, I think she might be one of the first people that was really out there doing a ton of painting and kind of getting the word out there about this incredible technique. Well, I think that you know. Uh, Really, like with uh, Nancy Braun, I think was one of the, the first. L'Oreal brought balayage education to the U.S. back in the 70s, actually. And, you know, this is really a method of coloring the hair that you can utilize in so many creative ways. And L'Oreal Professional was one of the first brands that created a certification surrounding balayage. And the fact that I got to be a part of really developing that, you know, certification along with the rest of the balayage team, which shout out to the balayage team, you know, that we really were passionate about people having the right tools to create whatever look that they want to create in the hair. You know, behind the chair, I paint, I foil, I use meshes, I block color. I'm a hairstylist, you know, so it's what is the right tool for the right look that I'm going for, but I have a special affinity and just passion and love for painting because it requires you to be super present for every piece that you're working on. You know, you get a little Bob Ross, mm -hmm. little happy highlights you know, everywhere. <laughs> being a razor cutter, I've always felt like it's the razor cutting of color. Totally. You, much, you know, not to say totally. I, I'm not judging any other techniques, but it's a much more emotional feeling based technique it's like the razor cutting of, of color well you need the you need the foundation behind doing that but then it really becomes about expressing your artistry and having those pieces perfectly placed in there and that you know when you're doing something like razor cutting like it's all about the detail with painting it's all about the detail as well
So it looks like you've pretty much got the, um, the final pieces in there. We're going to let Marissa process, and then we'll put up some photographs of the finished result. But if you're interested in what this looks like on a different base, um, very similar application, Teresa can, can speak to uh, Vanessa's hair. So Vanessa came in with absolutely no hair color in her hair to begin with. I That's was like, fun. I was like, you are a unicorn <laughs> in an enchanted forest of brunetteness. <laughs> but what I did is I went off of her natural part, just like we did with Marissa, dividing the hair in half. And I, because her hair is a little bit thicker, I took some you know soft diagonals in the hair. Now what you can see in this is that this is where the saturation is beginning. But as we walk up the hair, that was my first section, right? going into my next section. So taking just nice, soft, clean diagonals till I got to the natural fall in the head. So on her shallow side, this is three sections, right? I'm gonna have you turn towards me. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> going into the other side and balancing that density from looking from one side to the other. Section one, section two, section three, section four. So going into a three quarter, I didn't, in the back I just did a few accent pieces. So I started in her first section, I did no coloring in the nape because of the length of her hair. I wanted to make sure it had that depth to support that lightness because I want it to feel brighter around the front. We use multi techniques with 40 volume, that process for about 15 ish ish. <laughs> so multi techniques is the name and this exactly. is more of a powder lightener. This from is the a powder studio. lightener that does most of its lifting in the first 10 to 15 minutes. You can see it has that blue in there so it's also helping like neutralize as it's lifting. We glossed her hair utilizing Rochesse so that's our demi permanent. It has a little bit more opacity to it but still high shine. We use two parts 7N one part point one one and my homie Madison. Hey. So Madison did the beautiful styling yeah. here. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you styled, what product she used? Yeah, we actually just prepped her as L'Oreal Professionals Dansete just to kind of build up the cuticle and give you some volume throughout the hair. Um, Julie, can you grab the Dansete? And then we just, we gave her a really quick blowout. Went through the hair with a um, one and a quarter inch Marcel iron and we finished her with our um, Next Day Hair by Techni Art and a little Infinia. So what is that product exactly? It says uh, it's a blow-dry primer? What? Yeah, it's a blow-dry primer. It really kind of like bulks up the cuticle and it's adding volume throughout the hair. She has such thick hair on her own, but it really gives you that, you know, that look and that fullness to really show off that beautiful haircut that she has. And then this is legendary. Did you finish with some Infinium? The Infinium yeah. 3, of course, we did. That kind of calmed down those flyaways. <laughs> and, of course, a little um, Next Day Hair by Techni Art. And that just kind of shook it up and gave it that tousled, you know, effortless New Yorker look. She How does just, it feel, Vanessa? She wakes up this great. way. Love it. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, guys, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you for all the love. Teresa, what an incredible job of education. Marissa's going to process now, um, and then we're going to get her finished up and styled, and we'll put some finished photos in the feed if you guys want to see, but we all know this is going to be beautiful. You can tell by the application, proofs in the pudding. I also want to really thank L'Oreal Professional for your ongoing support of education. We're reaching hundreds of thousands of hairdressers every year with these uh, HB Lives, and it's really making a difference. So thank you, L'Oreal Professional. I'm going to leave the final words to you, Teresa. I, I'm so excited that we got to do this, but also that we had hairstylists from around the world because I think our common language is our passion for hair. So it's an honor and a privilege. We look forward to seeing you at some classes and some future harebrained videos. Right on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Peace out. We'll see you real soon with another edition. Bye, Nanette.